Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Nest. This episode, we're chatting all things Gen Con. That's right, it's coming out this weekend. This is a nice little primer show to get you ready for Hero Clicks at U.S. Nationals. This is episode 527. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. Now I'm here to take you back. Bye. You may try, but you know the deadpan humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your captain. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Send me to be able to that That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your looks like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And if you want to get Hero Clicks straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code Dial H10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. That is, you know, not a pre order, not a handful of other things, like Conics, a few other things the code doesn't work for, but check it out. Joining me in the studio is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Oh, it's going. It's going. We're in the studio. We're in the studio. Mm-hmm. Actually, <laughs> and then the that's studio. it. And then we just don't say anything. And it's an hour and a half of silence after that. Yeah. And we're then just, we go. We're just <laughs> hanging out this episode. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it is a pretty nice, chill night to hang out, talk it's some Gen beautiful Con stuff. Place you have. Thank you. I've really you tell you really up the put studio. a lot of work into it. Yeah, really yeah. spruced it up. Yep, I try. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I assume, you know, what made you happy is what made me happy. And it was seeing Deadpool with the boys. Right? It was actually a different movie. Oh. It was two movies, actually. Oh, no. Revolving around oh, the same no. character, some would oh, argue. No. Deadpool was at whatever. But let me tell you about <laughs> Thor. Let me get the actual now, title I fought of for this, this movie. Though. We, you guys didn't want to watch them last time that we uh, were scrolling on Tubi. <laughs> so for those that don't know, if you have a smart television... Tubi is like just a free service that has ads, whatever, and you can you can stream some real gems. There really are real some, gems, some great yeah. some great hidden finds on Tubi, and these are both. I don't even want to say the reveal just quite yet, but they're I both. I don't movies. even know what their names are. I can't. Uh, so one is so they're both Thor movies. They are. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. Thor End of Days. End of Days. The other one's Thunder and Steel. Thunder and Steel. Yeah. Oh so, my goodness. So End of Days was a real Thor movie. Well, okay, it's not a real Thor movie. <laughs> real. It's a it's a <laughs> it's a movie that somebody thought, okay, well, I'm gonna hire some actors. I'm gonna hire some lighting sound. Like I'm gonna actually try to put together a good team of people and try to make my little fan film like a real almost feel like there it's was a effort. feature. There, there was, was a lot effort of, there was forward. a lot of effort. And I would say as far as a a low budget effort film, there's a lot of effort. Thor, Thunder, and Steel was, I got me and my buddies and... Uh, got an apartment, uh, some I'm, white walls, I'm horrible Thor, shadows. My yeah. mom will let me use a, her garage for a few scenes. That hey, that was hey, Thor, buddy. Thunder, and Steel. Hey, buddy. Wow, you really got um, zapped by lightning, didn't you, bud? <laughs> Dang, pal. But, but which movie put us all to sleep, though? Oh, it was the Thor... The the first one we were talking, end the one of with days. the effort, end, end of, of days, days. the yeah, one that actually had effort. It was so boring and slow. Honestly, like if you guys are needing to get to bed, Nyquil, no, nah. <laughs> no, nah, it's not going to do it. Throw this movie on, like, dude, I was trying, and as like, I mean, Calder can attest to this. I am a truly a lover of bad media. I consume bad media. I enjoy it. I'm messed up. I don't know, but this one, like, even I, like, no, no way. Last week we watched Nuclear Hurricane, (laughs) which is Hurricane. Oh my gosh! Was also so horrible and misleading, as there was not really a hurricane threat, nor was there there a nuclear hurricane. hurricane. There was the the personality hire in the nuclear office. (laughs) This was genuinely one of the worst movies I've ever seen. In such weird ways, but uh, but one that was like I could at least stay awake in Thor. I just. Dude, I was fighting. I remember like just nodding off that we all did. Who are you? Point. I don't I don't remember. It was like so it's so <laughs> I'm not gonna be Thor for this uh, until the last ten minutes of this movie. Yeah, this was very much the Donald Blake storyline, except his name was Garrett. Um, yeah, the Defender the was Defender. His, yeah, is what he subtitled as is the Defender. It's, it gracious. was so, so bad. The other movie though was like so bad and so low budget, like literally. I actually enjoyed it. Shot on that one iPhone. was like yeah. so bad. I'm kind of 
laughing at how bad it is. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which in a way, like that's better, you know. Oh, it's way better. When you think about it, it's like if you if you have low production and you take that next step to to have better production and that's what you center it around, you're going to have a bad product. Cuz like your production is never going to blow people away. So when you take that next step, if you don't also raise the other things around it, like yeah. you're just going to have a bad product and that's exactly what this Thor movie was. We've already given it too much attention. Way too much attention. But seriously, the really review for to... it out of 10 is if you need to go to bed, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Excellent film. Well, I'm not even kidding. I might have to pull it up some night so I can pass out earlier. I'm going to see if it works. For a long time. It like, has uh, to. It has to. I would watch. I'd watch like Hearthstone. I'd watch people stream that. And I'd oh, be good sure. for like it's one like game. White noise or whatever. Could, you know, focus on it for one game. And then after that, I'd just be <laughs> just out. So that's what I did for like years, and even now, like if I if I see like pro Hearthstones on, sometimes I'll check it out. It just makes me so tired. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, so you could create the same placebo with Thor, but yeah, no, Deadpool three was also so awesome. Deadpool there is a rocks. cameo in this movie. I'm not going to spoil it. Where uh, everybody we were with looked at me, and I I mean <laughs> yeah, just stood up and yelled, <laughs> yeah, yeah! <laughs> it rocked. That was surreal. Like there, were, I mean, yeah, we're not gonna get any no spoiler territory here, but I heavily, heavily enjoyed it. Some of the cameos I like knew about because they kind of were yeah. spoiled or like talked about a lot. I went in um, knowing like nothing. I watched the first trailer and that was it. Really, that was it. And I had a great time. I mean, not that that separates me from no, having a better no. time, but but I think you know, kind of not knowing when someone's gonna show up or or like what character is gonna be in it, mm-hmm. you know. I think it adds, you know, because oh, really in the, in the scene where the cameo you're talking about was, I knew like the one other person, almost everybody on the internet knew that that person was going to be there because oh, sure. they talked about it a whole bunch. Um, I but yeah, say number again, two was like... But number two was like, what? Yeah. And then number three was like, you're kidding. Yeah. Not, what? It escalated for sure. It really, it really did. Like some of these cameos were just like... And then the Not line real. that number two delivers <laughs> oh, was legitimately, dude. yeah, yelled again in the theater. It's like a half full theater on a Friday so afternoon. Yeah. yeah, seeing Deadpool 3 at 1 p.m. on a Friday afternoon kind of rocked, though. I was um, probably a little obnoxious, but, you know. For a Friday at 1 p.m., probably. It's got to be. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. What well, you guys will understand. I mean, it's dead, I mean, it's Deadpool 3. If you haven't seen Deadpool 3, then maybe you don't know. But if you have seen it, you're like, yeah. You, you know can, who I'm talking about. You can about. shout like a little bit the first time you see it. Like, that kind of rocks, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And uh, I think as a whole, like, it was a really fun watch. I think I'd definitely be more critical of it if I were to watch it again. Probably. Because ultimately, so first and foremost, it is a very fun movie that's aware of itself. But I think second... It does suffer from the same problems that has made Marvel kind of bad the last five years. The multiverse is, yeah. We're so zoomed out. It's like, if we could just focus on a character, and I know Deadpool, like, it's the third movie. You can get away with it now. Yeah. But going forward, Marvel really just needs to hone in on, like, singular, more personal stories. And then when you have those bigger arcs, they're more entertaining. Yeah. So that's my hope, is that when things like Daredevil come out, it's not going to be about who's Daredevil teaming up with. It's going to be about Daredevil, yeah. you know? We'll see. Captain America, New World Order. That's the yeah, yeah. The title. We'll see oh, no, sorry. Brave New World. Brave New World. Yeah, they changed New it. New World Order. Oh, it was, was that what it was? It was, was oh, New okay. World Order in the beginning, but it's Brave say, New World. Am I World. thinking of something else? No, you're right. I'm hoping that it's the same thing there. Where I hope it's very grounded. Yeah. I, I hope the, the people that we've seen and the people we know about, I hope we don't get too many more surprises than that. Yeah. Because um, I ca- kind of already know his like supporting cast. I kind of already know who his villains are going to be. I um, hope it stays that way. I hope it stays that way as well. In I, the Captain America sphere. Yeah, because, well, C- Civil War... No, sorry. I meant to say Winter Soldier. Totally different vibes from movies. I hope it can start to project more civil or Jesus goodness gracious winter soldier vibes. Yeah. I wanted to project winter soldier vibes where it's like there's cap. Uh, this story is about Widow, two people. There's winter soldier and it's, Oh, Hey Falcons here. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. Falcons here. I but like, the story's about two I people, like Falcon, but it's about two people. It's about their relationship and it's that's about it. like a coming. Yeah. It's really cool. And like, that's what I, that's what I want it to be. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to be. Hey, remember guy from thing. 
and 20 other times guy from thing Ooh. that's that, don't get me wrong i love guy from thing mm-hmm. i i love so many guys from so many things mm-hmm. but i don't need to see them in every movie all the time no you don't you know it you really it, don't it works when it works and it's like oh that's fun but it's not a um, and it worked very well in deadpool it did but that just can't be the direction they continue to well, trend you also you kind of go into deadpool knowing that it's like yeah deadpool is going to be reference city it's going to yeah. be callback it's going to be guy from thing times a million mm-hmm. and you wanted that though Going into Deadpool, you were like, I just I really hope Marvel doesn't it. like see the reviews oh. for Deadpool and go, oh, so we just do this with everybody. Yeah, geez, I agree. Man, I, lots of Marvel movie news, too. I think we also have to address that Robert Downey Jr. is, oh, is named Doom? as Doom. There's no way he's actually Doom. The official dial H stance, I think, is like, I don't like that. I don't like it I don't if, like he's that. if he's but actually Doom. But if he's a Doom. variant Doom, my, my prediction is that along the lines of another person we were speaking with about this, where it's going to be some like alternate reality where he's like the variant. infamous Iron Man. He's a variant. Maybe he's the demon in armor. Although that, if you've read that storyline, that seems very unlikely to me. Yeah. I don't think that makes a ton of sense. Like that's literally body swapping. Yeah. I don't know about that. Maybe. I'm fine with it if it is. I am fine with him being Doctor Doom as long as he's not actually the Doctor Doom. Right. He's My not hope- actually 616 Victor Von yes. Doom. Yeah. Like. My hope is that they have some kind of misdirection, and then the real Doom comes, squashes him. He's like, "All right, like, yeah, it's time for like the real story." The now. number ones in town, and I think like what I've read online too is that this seems to be like the prevailing opinion that people don't want. Like, well, no, why would you? Yeah, <laughs> you, my like, my comparison to it was like this is like trying to rebrand Michael Jordan, like putting a wig on him and being like, "Yeah, it's a new player." <laughs> yeah, welcome him to the league. Yeah. Michael Jordan 2.0, you know, like Jordan Michael. Because <laughs> oh, this guy carried the Marvel franchise for like a decade, yep. more so than Straight that. Straight up, yeah. And now it's like, oh, we don't know what to do, so we'll bring him back we'll as a new him. cool character. So, yeah, I mean, overall, like him as Doctor Doom is like a 0 out of 10. If he's a variant, 10 out of 10. It got Great you know, fake out. It did its job. It got the internet talking. It got about a million no. comic YouTubers making a video of when was Iron Man, Doctor Doom. Like, That's goodness true. Goodness gracious, dude. I've seen so many of those in my feed. Like, yeah, we get it. Some. Okay. For the normies out there. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, um, so, yeah, like it, it did its job. It got everybody talking about it. It was literally posted everywhere. It was memed on everywhere. You know, no one. I, I saw so little about the Thunderbolts panel, the Fantastic Four trailer that was even shown. I've only seen glimpses of that, but everybody's talking about Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. Yeah, that so is everywhere. It did. It did its job. I mean, this is the character people have been asking for for probably like twenty years now. Like since, because yeah. like, they've just done him so dirty, and he's so cool. And then to have like the most prevalent face in Marvel come and do that, I don't know. It should be someone new. It should be someone yeah. fresh and. I'd love it if they casted like a no name. Like take the Star the Wars approach. Well, like, that I'm was... kind of sick of actors like The Rock taking a superhero role. Yeah. Making it more about themselves than the hero. 100%. And now that it's like, you know, the paycheck for a superhero does it get any better? You're attracting those kinds of people who I think ultimately aren't as invested in the story I, or the source material. I wish they would start doing like Actors that isn't that aren't on everybody's radar. So that's what they did yeah. early on. It was like Robert Downey Jr. You get another opportunity to be an actor again. You kind of did yeah. with Tropic Thunder, but you know with Iron Man, it was like, oh man, really? You're gonna cast Robert Downey Jr. in this? But it's like you know Chris Evans had done like some teen movies, and yeah, he was Human Torch, but he was a wasn't the star that it's he is also today. earlier on where it's you not know? as big of a risk to cast yeah. those heroes because it wasn't as popular. That is but, true. It was it was really you know. but like you know Chris Pratt as Star Lord, which is like yeah, who cares about the Guardians of the Galaxy? But then and that's that made like him a mega five star. years in, yeah, six yeah. years in. So it was like, you know, Chris Pratt was like starting to get like more roles, Jurassic World and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. still, it was before he kind of really hit his peak and it was kind of Guardians was like, oh, wow, put him in the forefront of everybody's mind. Yeah. So you could I, so do that again. I wish Doom. they would. I wish they would lean more to that, like their early cast. Like Chris Hemsworth was in like Cabin in the Woods. And what else? Literally, what else has he been in besides Thor and Cabin in the Woods? I can't. People can obviously name, I don't know, the ex, like at that time. You I know, feel in like we're forgetting a bigger project. In 2011, 2010, Star Trek, I guess, for the opening scene, he was Kirk's dad. Is there oh. anything else like that's prevalent for Chris Hemsworth? No. So for the most part, it's like, yeah, he'd done some feature films, but he wasn't like a mega star. And I, yeah, I will gladly, I'll gladly be wrong, but I don't think, yeah, I don't think I am. So I wish they could go, and I get that it was early, like you said, and they could take those risks a little easier. But they still could. They're they so still successful. They like, I know you can't can. get Doom wrong, off of, but you can vet 10,000 people. Off of, a, like, off of the character alone, you can get someone to come in. Because, yeah. I mean, and superhero actors have talked about this on podcasts, on videos, where they're like, you know, 
when I accepted to become whoever, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, people don't care that much about Brie Larson necessarily, but they love Captain Marvel. So yeah. they, they see me as the Captain Marvel actress and not Brie Larson. Or I'm just using her as an example. She didn't maybe yeah. necessarily say this, but other people have said that about superheroes where it's like, yeah, when you step into that role, now you're Captain America. Now you're Iron Man. People don't necessarily will go and see every Chris Evans thing ever. No. But they love Captain America, so they're going to love that. So If you're good enough, you can transcend the role. You absolutely can. You know, I think Wolverine and Iron Man are the best examples of that. Hugh Jackman, I go out of his way to, or I go to my, out of my way to watch his movies. You know, I say that. Unfortunately, I think the only other Hugh Jackman movie I've seen is like Greatest Showman, as of man, like The Prestige. Never seen The Prestige. Oh, dude, it's so good. Okay, there's uh, there's so many examples. We're running a bit long on we this are, segment, we really but are. it's important, guys. Uh, you know, it's only but fifteen minutes in the show ish. Robert Downey Jr. too, like. I it's so I think wild. that's another no. person where if I see his name, I'll probably watch his movie. Yeah, I mean, I love Sherlock. Love the Sherlock Holmes Sherlock movies. Holmes they're really movies. fun. Was it Due Date, the one with uh, Zach Galifianakis where they like go oh, across the road? Yeah. To, like, I didn't see Dr. Doolittle. I will say I ignored Dr. <laughs> I did Dr. not see that one. I don't no, apparently, nobody did, actually. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I don't terrible. really care who's Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doomlittle. If, if, uh, if Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doolittle, I like him. Okay. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Those are just you know the classic ones that you think. But anyways, hey, what made us happy this week? It was Marvel movies. Lots bad of, and lots good. Of news. Yeah. Mostly, <laughs> technically mostly bad, but the good one was really good. So it made <sighs> so it made up for it. So it works pretty well. Let's Ian. Let's talk about Gen Con. Let's talk Gen Con. I am I'm so ready for this. We are going to be leaving early in the morning, uh, a few nights from now. Yep. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot to be excited about. First and foremost, before we get into the Hero Click stuff, Calder and I are both so hype to get the Hero Escape 2.0. <laughs> we really baby. are. Yeah, it feels so the weird. Sergeant to say Drake a... exclusive. <sighs> Sergeant Drake Alexander rocks. Mm-hmm. Dude's got a katana. Dude has his cool grappling hook gun. He was so fun to play in original Hero Escape. I'm I'm excited that Hero Escape is back. I have a lot of fond memories playing Hero Escape growing up. Yeah. Uh, mostly to like my one other friend who like I tried to teach him to play Hero Clicks and he was like, no, I'm gonna play Hero Escape. I'm like, all right, fine, you win. Um, but then there was like some other conventions that I went to and I just no lived Hero Escape at them and it was so much fun. So I'm I'm really happy that Hero Escape is back. Um, I can't wait to try to play with some of this new stuff. The miniatures look really cool. They I think if we really if good. we splurge, we get some Hero Escape. It's going to be painted. You know, I, I don't want to go through that again. I'm not a, not about that painting stuff. I want these to look nice. Also, <laughs> not yeah, no not chance. Calder nice. Like good, I am not. Good, nice. I'm not a painter. Yeah, no, I don't. I ain't about that. But yeah, painting is not not for me at all. So the pre painted Hero Escape 2.0. So looking forward to. Absolutely. If one of us can jump into a. One of the play oh demo. Mm-hmm. I was actually talking with Anthony about this a little bit today. Here, who's judge Anthony Barnstable? Shout out, shout out, um, fastest judge in the world, fastest um, judge in the world. He, I was like, yeah, we should try to do a demo because he was also talking to me about Hero Escape because we had talked about at Adepticon about it, um, and he was like, yeah, all the demos are sold out, yep. packed. And I was like, wow, okay, well, but you can get a really cool like convention exclusive like <sighs> Triple Ninja. They look like they they're from sick. Mortal Kombat, so. I don't know. I'm going to have to at least stop by that booth and be like, look, oh, yeah. we're working media. Like, if there's anything you can do, please. Yeah, can please. We, we'll, can we please we'll just get one you copy our podcast. of this? Yeah, we we'll have Hero in the name. Guys. <laughs> we're basically the same. <laughs> but so I'm, I'm really excited uh, to just see that stuff. Yeah. I'm sure they'll have some new exclusive stuff. I'm also really stoked because it's supposed to be like compatible with all the old stuff. Which means I got to play the broken Marvel figures that came Ugh. out, which are just Ew. I showed you some of those where it's like Thanos just yeah, literally comes dude. back to life, or Red Skull can just kill somebody ten percent. That honestly like bums me out because I mean, shout out my mom for like you know just Throwing living away out of your hero escape. live not for doing that <laughs> for living with the insanity of my Hero Clicks collection. I mean, I've been playing this game since I was like four. And I've had friends come and go, and usually when they left, they would leave behind their collection. So oh. it would just amass and amass. And then, you know, started. I had a job. I could buy more Hero Clicks. You know, Luke <laughs> Luke and I, Here like, share go. a collection, too. So it just ramped up. And then when I, like, moved out of that house, you know, years ago, uh, the rule was, like, okay, anything you can fit in your closet, you can keep. I was like, okay, well, challenge accepted. It's insane what is in that. There's really? so many here. I have a tub of probably like three or four thousand, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's a bunch of drawers and shelves and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so she lived with that, and she understood, like, you don't throw away a hero click, mom. You find a hero click. One time they found a super rare Oz in the garage. 
Really? They sent a picture of it. I was like, thank God you did. I was like, I have no idea how that got there. But uh, that's just to give you an idea. It's like, it's every, it was everywhere, like when I was living there. But the Heroscape was in like a separate box in the storage room and it either got yeah. given away or thrown away. <sighs> And I'm just, oh, gosh, my brother God. and I are both so butt hurt. That hurts. But you can't bring that up and be like, Mom, why'd you throw away this one? It's like, come on. Yeah. I gave you a million breaks. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, <laughs> With true. hero clicks. I, I've lived this life. But yeah, it does kind of bum me out that you can play with the old stuff because it's like, I had all the old you stuff, had it. man. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah. I had some lava terrain even. Oh, yeah, dude. That was so I sick. Know. Lava terrain's so oh. sick. Not a ton of it, but yeah, like going to like Toys R Us with my dad or whatever. A yeah. lot of the time they'd be on sale. Like as far as I remember, Heroescape didn't sell very no, well. No, it didn't sell at all. I mean, it yeah became a defunct game and died. So yeah, it didn't sell <laughs> very you know, well. Being it's so at the crazy. store, I'll talk to people about Heroescape. I'm like, yeah, all these great memories with it. And it's like, man, how did this die? How did this yeah, just dude. fail out? I guess so bad. <laughs> yeah, go to the so store crazy. and picking them up. Oh my gosh, this is also like so random, but. uh one time, an ex girlfriend of mine was like, she, "Okay, she, she put." Hold, bear with me. It's okay. good. It's a good one. She uh, she put on her story one time on Instagram, like her playing HeroScape with another guy, and I was like, "I'm not even mad." I was like, "She's got good taste." <laughs> <laughs> but I remember being like, "Props to that dude." Mad respect. That's so funny. Not even mad. I was almost like, "Damn, can I come over?" <laughs> like, not, not really, but. <laughs> yeah, when I, that would be, Heroescape has a lot of different memories, but that's uh, why I'm so excited so for it. Oh Never even gosh. actually knew how to like fully play the game. That's either. hilarious to me that you didn't know how to play the game. Like, we played totally. our own rules. That's you know? so funny. We they were like based on the rules for Heroescape, yeah. but then we kind of abridged them. And uh, as a kid, my okay, your favorite piece was Sergeant Drake. Yeah, Sergeant Drake Alexander, hundred percent. I never got to play him because I had an older brother. Mm. So the piece Player I two. always played with was the Death Walker 9000, the big black guy, yep. the big black robot who had nine defense dice, but only one health. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking about now. Yeah. So you roll all the dice, and if you don't get a shield, it's like, you know, you just die. guy with stick can kill him. Yeah. That, could, that but happens. But just a ridiculous amount of defense dice. Yeah. So it's, yeah. But that, that rocked. So he was always mine. And then the other one, I can't remember his name. I think it was like the Emerald Archer. Okay. Legless looking dude who had yeah. like absurd range. They had like, like elves and stuff. Yeah. Green mystical archer. He rocked too. He was my he was my number two. And then like expansion pieces. Oh, I could go on and on. We don't need yeah. to. No, no, we don't. We are no. so so excited to have excited Heroescape. For Heroescape. I'm excited for a lot of stuff. I always like going around Gen Con, checking out the board games. Yeah. You know, this year Ian's going to join me. We're going to do some pin hunting. Yes, we I'm, are. I'm excited for collecting the pins. If you don't know, the centerfold of the Gen Con, just kind of like booklet manual thing that you get, guide, whatever, has all the pins that are exclusive at certain booths this year. So it's kind of fun to like wander around from booth to booth to like get all these pins. And then when you get like a certain amount, you can trade in these slips is what they've been doing recently where you can get one of the four like more rare pins. And then once you collect all four rare pins, you can get the ultra rare pin. So... You don't necessarily need... It's just kind of fun. It is it's just, fun. It's just like, ooh, okay. So I'm really hoping there's some good designs. If they've updated the designs by the time this comes out, no, eh, I guess I'll I'll know by then, but I don't know yet. So I'm excited yeah. for some designs. See what some booths like have some cool pins because there's all sorts of like fun games that I like to go to. There's like Dinosaur Island. There's Terror Below from like Renegade Studios. They have some really cool pins and a few others. So I'm really excited to do some pin collecting. Maybe even check out. I've been on a Y Schwarz kick this year. I've got to go to the Bushi Road booth, see what exclusives they had. I picked up. Is a that few what cards. your PSA ten Iron Man? That's what my two? PSA ten Iron Man two. Have you Japanese flexed that yet? card? I haven't not flexed that on the podcast. Oh dang! Or, flex or it quick. Like post it. Yeah, I'll flex it quick. So the, <laughs> the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a pack of Y Schwarz cards, like a set. And the only way to get this set uh, only had a Japanese release. For some reason, never had an English release. Mm. But within the set, you can get things that are called stamped cards, okay. which for normal ones usually has like the voice actor's signature or something. But these stamped cards uh, are movie posters. So I have an Iron Man 2 stamp. So big gold letters that says Iron Man 2 on the card stamped into it. And this card, I got, uh, I bought it graded. It's a graded PSA 10 
uh, Y Schwarz, Iron Ooh. Man 2 card. I mean, 10 is perfect, you guys. It's a beautiful. perfect card. So it's beautiful to look at. It's sick. It's got like Iron Man and War Machine back to back. It looks awesome. It is cool. It's it's just a really sweet card. I like the graded comics. So if you ever watch any of our videos, all the graded comics are mine. I love getting stuff graded. It's like having a graded card. It's my first graded card, too. So I think it's really cool. It's like a 10. It rocks. No. I'll, I'll post a little flex oh, pick. We'll, we also we'll have see. to do a quick shout out after we saw Deadpool as well. This isn't even a Hero oh, Clicks yeah. podcast anymore. We no, stopped at a comic store across about the street. for 20 something odd minutes. Yeah. Well, we'll put a timestamp in it. Don't worry, guys. It'll be yeah, a good it'll episode be in the for you. Yeah. This is your, your listen to on the way to nationals. There so we go. It's a this little is your longer. Gen Con traveling episode. So be it. We picked up these really cool posters. We'll have to post them on Facebook, but it's like some like oh, kind of old yeah. timey like war propaganda posters of Iron Man and Captain America. It's really cool. And it says like freedom isn't free or something on uh, some variation freedom of that. Isn't, um, er, like freedom's not like given; it's earned or something like that. Yeah. for Iron Man. Yeah, and, and Caps uh, says like there's like some freedom. planes in the background. It's like a paper mache material too. It's so it's like a really, really cool, it has and like it's that orange and blue. It. So they I, contrast. Yeah. Calder got a really cool like cap on a motorcycle. It was fifty percent really off. Statue, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like yeah. hundred something dollar statue. It's like fifty five bucks. I'm like, yeah, super please. tight. Thanos action off. figure Insane. too, because it's like, pff, why not? Toss them on there. So yeah, after the Deadpool movie, we went and balled we out. We just went and just splurged mm-hmm. on comic merch. It was a lot of fun. It it was a great day. It rocked. Okay, last closing statements on things outside of Hero Clicks at Gen Con. Yeah, I mean, I'm always on a dice hunt. If you guys have any tips, <sighs> tricks for getting dice at Gen Con, send them to your boy. I would like to find all the coolest dice, but generally that just means a lot of walking around and Ian hunting. Loves. Ian I love loves dice. The dice. I won't lie. There was one time we were looking at dice last year, and I was like, I got to go to some other booth. I don't. <laughs> He's yeah, going to well, be here. Ian's going to be here a long time looking at mm-hmm. pretty much all the dice they have. They had magnet dice that you could click a button and make them switch. What? Like you could roll them and like you hit a button and they turn to sixes or turn to fives, and I was like, they were like forty bucks. I was like, if they were cheaper, I'm Straight there. Straight up, I would cheater, never cheater dice. Yeah, it'd be fun to like it you would know, be do fun it at to home mess with somebody. Yeah. yeah, I'd be like, ah, I'm just messing with you. Yeah, and then win worlds with them. <laughs> yeah, it'd be hilarious to do that. <laughs> it'd be hilarious to win worlds to like jokingly, you know, win worlds with my as like a, with as my joke. real dice as a joke, as a joke though. though as a joke. And then out myself on Facebook with an hour long apology oh as a gosh. joke. No, <laughs> they were cool though to watch them in action. It's just like they geez, were pretty cool. People really go to full ends to get the roles they want. They, okay, it's pretty crazy. Hero clicks. Hero clicks. So really quickly, we've got a lot. Don't really worry, quickly, guys. I'm gonna do something simple. While I have the Gen Con map pulled up, the Whiz Kids booth is Seven Eleven. Hilarious, mm-hmm. by the way. Uh, so Slushies, if you are at the exhibit hall entrance, this is like the middle entrance before it goes to that like weird side rooms. So, like if you know Gen Con, you know like the middle There's entrance. There's the big I guess. hallway. It's a big old hallway. So mm-hmm. not the first door to your left. It'll be the next door. It'll be in between these two. It's literally through that middle entrance up to your left. You'll see the big Asmodi booths. Or at least where is this like. relative to where it was last year, Calder? I think it's about in the same it spot. It looks to be about the I same, I want right? to say, unless... It was through the first entrance last year. I think, actually, last year they were in this first entrance because I believe they were closer. Uh, I don't even know what north, south, east, whatever wall this one is, I guess. There's no mm-hmm. compass on this map. Um, they were closer to the wall, I believe, last year. So I think they were through this first entrance to the left. Now, But it's the same vicinity where it's like very, if you're walking in through this main entrance, it's like the front to your left yep, corner. Yeah, it's basically the front to the left corner. So they're And they're also pretty close to the door. There's only one other really booth, I guess, touching the wall before you get to their booth. Mm-hmm. So they're really close to the door. They're really close to the entrance. So get in there, get your high five dead pools, you know, whatever else, your your tickets and all that stuff that you need. Uh, that's what the Wiz Kids booth is. So you can find it. It's in, again, it's in a great location because some of these booths are off in the middle of, if you have never seen the Gen Call, Gen Con ex- exhibit hall, it's massive. It's oh, yeah. insanely huge. And it's packed. And it's, oh my gosh, it's, it's packed. So the fact that the Wiz Kids booth is just really close to the door, so helpful. It's a good it's deal. so huge. So, that's where you can find it. Get your exclusives for those going. Booth 711. If you look on your little little fun map, mm-hmm. easy to find. Well, now Nationals. Nationals. Yeah, wow, right just right into it. A new beast, really. So, I think where we'll start at, we already covered prizing, everything that you can win by yep. participating you last week. You know that. Week. That was on last episode. We actually have uh, a member of our Discord, Bill, who is a Shout out Bill. 
He's worked in statistics for like two decades now. Oh, we got to go to this. And he yes. has been putting together this sheet for quite some time. It will be available. You can click it in the description below. But he has been making ELO standings for every tournament that has been posted to HC units for the last... So this would be for 2024. So every 2024 yes. tournament going forward. So pretty much Florida so, and on. I do know this started with the qualifiers... For, so it's all 300 modern, mm-hmm. but it started with the qualifiers for Champion Clicks Open. Okay. So I want to say there's two qualifiers where I won one and then Azure Strife won another one. At the very least that I can remember. So it started around that time, which is like late, late December 2023. But then from that point to now, it's all basically all 300 modern tournaments where he has the data from them. And that is the win and loss ratio, like more than just like the winner, like the win and loss right the i think mm-hmm. points scored things like that where it's like the full data point differential point, like how yeah. much did you win by is an important yep. factor and so within an the document factor. if you guys click on it if you want to go ahead and look at it while you're listening they're assigned an elo similar to chess so for example you know if magnus carlson beats somebody with like super low elo it does nothing for him it doesn't move right. him at all if he were to lose to that person though he's dropping considerably so there is waiting here now, that isn't fully like fleshed out. Calder and I are not the people who made this document, but regardless, right. we think it's very cool. It's really cool. And in see. the future, prior to Worlds, we will... I mean, yeah, I'll talk about it. What I want to do is I'd like to do like an ESPN-style segment where we really go into the nitty-gritty of this stuff. And uh, when we have Nationals data, that might be more beneficial, especially with the Champion Clicks events in between. There's a lot of potential to have some cool discussions on where players are ranking. But the most important things are, one, getting out and playing. Players who are out playing in more events are probably going to have a higher ELO, assuming they're performing well. Most players who play more than other players, they typically do. Right. The other thing is what we just talked about, where you have like an ELO, which means you have an expectation to win by X amount yep. or to win, you know, X amount of games. And then the other thing is the Pythagorean expectation. So this is something that is used for baseball. And this is essentially predicting uh, the winning percentage for somebody like for a season or any given amount of time, depending on what you're measuring. So that's like the prediction for how much a player will win going forward, like a broad stroke. And so the rankings here, once again, this is only based on 300 modern tournaments. So if you did really well in like 400 silver, that's not going to have a factor here. Going into just 300 modern are, let's do the top 10. Uh, Let's start from... Ah, come top on. Top 12? You come on, top let's do the top 12. Top at 12. least the top 12. All right, Calder, who's number 12? Number 12 is Calder Ness. He has an <laughs> ELO of 1,579.5. His win percentage, this Calder Ness player here, is 81.91% win percentage in the games that he's played. His ELO did drop by one recently, though. Poor guy. Poor guy. So, yeah, Calder Ness, 12th place <laughs> ELO. So that's all I wanted to do. I just yeah. wanted to shout out yourself. <laughs> I just to yeah, shout don't myself blame out. So to go into just the Pythagorean uh, expectation, quick explanation of that is it compares a team's actual and Pythagorean winning percentage, and it can be used to make predictions and evaluate which teams are overperforming and underperforming. So this percentage just gives you a look at like what's expected of them essentially. I think right. is a fair way to put it. Yeah. Once again. Not the person who made this document. Yeah. If you want to come at me and tell me, yeah, if you guys want to get mad at us, hey, probably agree with you. You know, don't shoot the us. messenger. Shoot yeah. the sheriff. We're merely just saying this is some really <laughs> cool, but this is like this is math. This is statistics. And mm-hmm. if algebra taught me anything, you can argue with math as much as you want. Mm-hmm. You're wrong. Math already. Probably, you probably math got to figure it out. Math do be math. And yeah. Uh, and then in tenth, tenth tie for tenth. Yeah, two people. Joseph Ruffing and Andrew Young, both with 1581. Now, what's interesting here is that the win percentage for Ruffing, or the pre- projected win percentage, is 69.5, while Andrew's is 82.5. I cannot wait for Bill to just eat us alive. I know. For talking about this so stupidly. But it is still fun to see the rankings for people who have consistently done well in modern. So more, most importantly is the ELO. At number nine is Lucas Van Hollen with 1587. So six points above 10th. And his win percentage is 78.93. Okay. George Masu at number eight with a 69.02 and a 1599 ELO rating. So this is where you start to see a little more discrepancy in I've the noticed, ELO rating. Yeah. Is that from Lucas to George, you have a 12-point jump. And then to Jalen, who's new to the block, 
Uh, recently, he's placed second at an ROC event in Ohio, and then he also got second at Origins. He's playing Iraq night. I'm rooting for him. Oh, that rocks. But his ELO is stated at 1605, but his win percentage is a bit lower than everyone we've talked about, which is 66.59. So that could be an indication that maybe Jalen's overperforming right now. Oh, okay, I see. Which because is interesting. Kind of is, you know, he's yeah. doing really well in recent events, so that makes sense. Less sample size, lower projection. Right. I think is probably a fair way to put it. Anthony Berrigan, who has also made waves, he's yep. done really well even outside of modern as well. He's got a sixteen eighteen ELO with a seventy three point one percent, and then at number five, I think the top five comes at no surprise. These are all names we've all heard mm-hmm. a million times. These you are know. people that. I mean, if you're in the sphere at all, if you're listening to our podcast, Critical Clicks, Click Stuff, whatever, you know these names. You know them. This is no, yeah, I by think all means. The one exception here for me is that Lucas Van Hollen probably should be higher on this list, but right. at the same time, at Origins, I believe he went two and three. He, so I think Origins three and two. definitely hurt his ELO a lot yeah. at Origins, uh, not getting. Not when you're losing Origins, to, like, really you know, tough. no offense, like no name players, you know, people who aren't right. ranked, right? Right. Uh, those losses will hurt you more when you have the expectation that Lucas does being undefeated at Adepticon. Right. Yeah, I mean he's he's probably higher up there. The so this is again where a few other things. Yeah, like you see, Lucas is lower on the leaderboard, but his win percentage is a bit higher than it's quite literally players, everyone he's around. Uh, well, actually, yeah, that is true. Wow. So, yeah, this is a really interesting thing. Once again, we'll have Bill on in the future, but the top five: Josafa, Alves, or yeah, Alves. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, with a 1632.1 rating, so he's 14 points above Anthony there. Uh, and his projected win is 69.58%. Number four, Jackson Smith, who's consistently done well. Yeah. 1644 with an 82.12. The I believe. highest win percentage in the top five. Yes. Yeah. Considerably as well. Yep. Alex Mater, who we all know has made waves, he's he done has. very well. U.S. national champion last year, Florida champion this year. And yeah, done top eight at Worlds as well. Yep. Uh, there's yeah, there's no question. Alex Mater is an incredible player. He's sitting at sixteen fifty seven point two, but his win percentage Lowest is projected win percentage in the top yeah. five. Crazy. So that just goes to show, like in recency, Alex has not been performing to what he's previously been held to. So it's it's interesting. And another thing to factor in here, guys, is obviously take all this with a grain of salt, because ultimately the pool that these are sourcing from. Is probably close to like 20 to 40 games. Right. It's, you know, a handful of tournaments. But the more tournaments we have going forward, the more prominent and meaningful this data becomes. So I'm really interested to see. It has to start somewhere. This is where it's starting now. Mm -hmm. And it's had, I mean, it's had seven ish months, eight months so far to like kind of build itself up. But we kind of talked about there's not as much hero clicks 300 modern as you actually think there is yeah. when you really break it down and start looking at all these terms there's a lot data. more talk than there is walk but what's awesome is i firmly believe we're moving into an era where we're getting to more walk i think so too i agree there's a lot of tournaments coming up i'm i'm really excited to just be back like to local play got to shout out ryan opalk again hey, <laughs> for really reviving he's putting this in that stuff. work man he really he is. is providing transparency with pretty much from what i understand everyone across the board and yeah, we're really just working to bring HeroClix back to your store and making it meaningful, giving yeah. you those prizes, giving you a reason to play past, hey, we play. So if WizKids continues to trend in that direction, you know, I think that one, this data will be a lot more successful, and two, so will the game. Yeah. Um, to close out, this one's interesting because this is a shift of plus four. So Azeroth was previously outside of the top uh, five, but now he's in the second place with a 1688.4 ELO. His win percentage, though, is only 67.05. So this is, again, that recency showing. At least that's what I'm assuming it for. We'll have Bill on again. (laughs) He'll be able to have a more in-depth analysis of his system and how it all works. My prediction on this is that Azeroth has probably beaten higher-ranked players, and that's why he's been able to jump up so much. That makes sense. Shout out him also for playing the one-man army uh, Phoenix Wolverine. Truly wild. That's insane. (laughs) Love it, though. That rocks. And yeah, he, I think he got, I think he got top eight. Uh, don't quote me on it. And then in first, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. This guy's at every, just about every event. Yep. And that's Daniel Powell, and his elo is just absolutely crushing it's everybody. Insane. He's a full sixty points ahead of second. His win percentage sitting at a solid seventy four point two eight. It just shows that Daniel Powell consistently plays. Yep. And he consistently does well. He consistently places. We'll see if he can get a big title win this year. Yeah. I mean, 
yeah, as far as I know, like Dan does well just about everywhere he goes. And you can see that reflected here. But now Dan also has that axis working against him where it's like if he were to play somebody lower on the rungs and lose, his elo could take a larger hit. Yeah. So I think this is a really interesting list, guys. Uh, There's some Wikipedia page links in here to explain further what Calder and I can't. There's also other tabs for the 2024 Player of the Year, 300 Modern Player of the Year, a ton of other stuff, Pulp, Silver, and then I think the last thing of note, because this might come as a surprise to some, they're probably asking, where's where's he ranking? Where are these people ranking? If you're curious, Isaac Arnold Ber- Berkowitz, who has not shown up to as many events, I think, in recency as he has in the past. No. He's sitting at 13th with a 1576.5. Which is below 12th. Which is below 12th. And 12th so is called an S. Confirmed he is <laughs> Just so worse than called an S at Hero Clicks. Go ahead. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Calder's the one saying it. I'm just the mouthpiece. Let him, let him know. Let him know. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. And then I think the other one that what people would be curious ones? about yeah. is Scott Crampton at 25. Oh, sure. With a 1544.3. Yeah. But look at this. I think Scott almost has the lowest <laughs> win percentage projection. Oh, my god. Any player with a 56.53. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to Who's dig more. Who's 55? Oh, nice. Yeah, someone with a slightly lower win percentage of 55.62% is Kevin Nelson. Oh, Kevin. Shout, shout out, out, Kevin. Shout out, Kevin. 30, 31st place, though. So, again, it's it's really easy to look at this and maybe just say, like, oh, you know, this doesn't seem right. And, you know, to a degree, you probably are right because, truthfully, there isn't enough data to sample from yet. There needs to be more meaningful data. But going into Worlds after all of these... Uh, champion clicks qualifiers the roc stuff and then worlds itself we should have some pretty robust numbers and i think if we get bill on to explain it more it'll be a lot of fun but poke around this document again it'll be linked uh, below i think it's a lot of fun and if you guys like seeing this let us know i mean i personally love this stuff i'm a kind of a junkie for this yeah and bill also gets a huge kick out of it too, you know so nerds love data no and i crazy i right? think i can speak for most nerds that i love data too it's mm-hmm. it's just fun i would never do this no not in a million not in years. a million years but when somebody has and they put in the work that bill has put in it's really yeah, fun you know, to look at you throw the bib on you get your fork and knife yeah and it's like ooh, <laughs> yummy, right yummy data i can look yeah. at yeah <laughs> So it's just a ton of fun. It's an absolute blast. And I think just exa- everything you're saying is that in the future, once we get it filled out a year or two, whatever it ends up being, it'll be it really cool. Really relevant. It's going to be really fun. Another thing too about this that I'm hoping is we can create some storylines. Okay. Know, Dan going into worlds now. So this is kind of the first, first of them. <laughs> is he going to be able to hold his number one spot? I know Alex Mater will be there. I think, I think Azareth will be there. I believe Azareth will be at Worlds. Pretty yeah. sure Josaph will be at Nats. So we'll yep. see how Nats can affect you know, them. I know Nationals, Jackson won't be. So Jackson won't be. So he's the only one in the top five that I know for sure isn't going to be at Nationals. Mm-hmm. So it will be cool to see. You know, we can update you guys after Nationals on this and we can mm-hmm. see how it changed because it's really fun to watch it change after a major tournament. So, oh, yeah. You know, I know typically Jay and Jalen will show up to Nationals. I'm sure George shows up. I know Lucas is going to be George there. will not be there. Oh, oh, he won't be. Oh, mm-hmm. shoot. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to go. Okay. He's not a Nationals man. Was he not a Nationals last year? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's so close to Michigan or Ohio or yeah. wherever. Huh. Okay, never mind. A decent amount of the top 10 are going to be playing and competing in Nationals. Yes. So it's going to be interesting to see how these scores change. And I'm yeah. excited. And, you know, to continue on the topic of statistics, one that I'm hoping to capture because everyone is losing their mind over it. The short map changes. Oh, if you don't go first, if you don't win initiative, then you lose the game. Not true, guys. This guy is falling in. And don't worry. I've got a team for you. Well, it's a little inaccessible, but I've got a team for you that could hopefully help you if you feel that you are in those same shoes. But first and foremost, the data that I'm hoping to get from nationals is uh every match for qualifiers and every match for uh like the top 32 or if it's top 16 i believe they cut to 32 16 it's 16 oh no it's 16 16. four from each pod qualifiers yep 16 so top 16 uh i would like to before every match ask hey who won here record that and then afterwards hey who won so i would like to develop a percentage for who won initiative Mm -hmm. and And we'll see how true that statement is that'll be interesting and then if we have the players' names as well, we can look at them on the chart and say, well, 
you know, this is a, a better player versus a worse player or whatever. Maybe sure. that has something to do with it. If there's misplays, obviously you'll never get the full story just from some numbers similar to this document. But I do think it will be interesting to look at how short maps and initiative is going to impact winning. Because yeah. I feel like this argument has, it's, it's as old as time. And I've never really fully believed it to be true. I mean, there's been some eras where it's more true than others, and it definitely has prominence. Like, you want to have decision there. You want initiative from initiative. Who would have thought? Yeah. But it's not the say all end all. So if you are particularly worried about it, maybe you need to consider building for that or around it. Maybe dare to do so. For all you devils out there. Wow. That might have been so the smooth. smoothest segue in Dial H history <laughs> that we've just done. All this right. is a new segment that Ian's talked to me about, and I'm excited to finally have on the show. Oh, but yeah. it, it's no secret that a lot of the teams that I play and do well with were cooked up by one by one Ian Eggleston. I'll usually say, I want to play this character or this. And Ian I'm, gets not, in, playing Maggot, I'm, I'm not playing Megan. I'm playing Captain America. I'm not playing Captain America. And, and, you know, things like that. And then Ian, he just gets right to the lab. He puts mm-hmm. on a safety goggles. He's mixing things in test tubes. And he's, oh, yeah. He's labbing it up. So this is the... Burning say the holes name. in the ceiling. Oh, yes, of course. This is the uh, untested, Ian invented, and eventually called or nested. A new, hopefully recurring uh, segment on the podcast here. And so for the last... I mean, geez, pretty much since he's come out. But I'd say probably for the last like three to four months. Legacy Daredevil, our focus for tonight has been kind of the subject for building for, yeah, like three or four months. And we've gone back and forth on so many different builds, but I finally have one that I think I really like. And so just kind of as an exposition to Daredevil, I do want to point out that George Masu has done very well with, well, not not very well, but, you know, he's he's done a good job. In Adepticon, he got top four. That's very impressive, playing a triple Daredevil build prior to Kingpin Prime's release, who is another Lich Pin for uh, the building that we'll be doing today. And then he was also playing Genesis APOC, which is a strategy we visited previously, but ultimately did not fall on because the meta has changed a bit. And he also played another team, which was very interesting, where he used all three of the avatars. He had Amit, Tarret, and Kanchi on his Daredevils. Yeah. Uh, he was playing the Kingpin Prime on this build. And it's it's been a little wacky. He was also using the... Blackheart with Shot Gauntlets, which I think is an awesome combo. I don't know if it's necessarily going to fit in here, but we are going to talk about it a little bit. Okay. So, first and foremost, let's talk about the pros of Legacy Daredevil. Why do we like this figure so much? So, one, he has flexibility. He's 10, 20, or 30 points. This guy also has an absurd trait that allows him to potentially not die, or just not be able to be like killed in one turn. So when I say not die, like, yes, you'll be giving up some points when he dies, but the point is, is that he will stay on the map. So if your opponent is wasting actions hitting Daredevil, they might score, but Daredevil's right there to clap back immediately, and he's going to hurt you. He's got the bonus from Scott Porter. He'll have the bonus from Prime Kingpin, who we'll go into a bit later here, and he hits really hard if you set him up to. So biggest perk of Daredevil is that he's really, really, really hard to take off the map. In addition to that, he's not exactly easy to hit. He's got super senses. He's got the wild card team ability as well. Sorry, team player. Excuse me. Which is going to allow him to copy different team abilities and make for some really, really defensive options again. On top of this, he also has the flexibility of his dial where he can be a charge quake, a plasticity poison, or a hypersonic piece, all of which are fantastic. Or the sidestep blades dial as well, depending on the route you want to go. So it allows you to lean into so many different options for what you want to do with Daredevil. So biggest perk is that he's really hard to take off the map. Doesn't die. He only has a 1 in 6 chance to uh, not go immune. The other thing that we really like about Daredevil is the Kingpin bonus. So Kingpin has an ability that is a global effect that lets all 30 point or lower characters that are standard, so Daredevil is standard, get a plus 1 attack and a plus 1 damage as well as toughness. Toughness is kind of whatever, keeps you from being poisoned, which is nice. But then in addition to that, Kingpin can also take a power action and choose two characters of 30 points or less within six squares, allow them to make an attack and move two squares as well. So you can kind of see where this is going. We're going to do a lot of stat modifications with the Scots, with things like Cathan, with things like Kingpin, and then different equipments like Bucky's Arm to really bump our Daredevils up. They'll be hard to take off the map 
and then we can allow Kingpin to let them attack even more. In addition to what makes King, or sorry, Daredevil so good is that his keywords are fantastic and they're misprinted and they were never corrected, which is, I mean, as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, that's God's gift right there. Monster, ruler, mystical, we love it all. Mystical lets us get Cathan for even more stat modification. It's crazy. And the biggest perk is that because he can't die, because you can't take him off the map, because he has all these bonuses, you can be very defensive, which, going back to our original point of why we like Daredevil, makes it really hard to KO this team. And it also means that if you go second, you probably have a good chance to attack back. So let's go over a few weaknesses, and then we'll jump into the team. Uh, weaknesses. Everyone has this weakness. Kong. Kong. He has no damage reducers. He has no stop clicks. He just kind of dies to Kong. Kong just bashes and Kingpin's real soft. So this team is going to aim to protect him because that's the big thing is like the Daredevils, you can quake them. All right, I go immune yep. or I super sense out. That's fine. But Kingpin, he dies. He just dies. And when you're targeting you everything. You lose a lot of legs once you lose Kingpin. It's mm-hmm. tough to come back from that. And so that's a, a talking point here is definitely how I think you should play Kingpin because I think a lot of people are looking at him wrong, which okay. is it's weird to say, but I've, I've thought so much about this, guys, I promise. But the, the big issue is like, yeah, he has Mastermind to protect him, but when Kong is quaking everything within three squares, potentially no twice, to too. only six clicks, probably penetrating damage. <sighs> it's tough. It's tough. Kingpin's just going... And then the other, I think, weakness for Daredevil is just setting up. If you're playing a lot of these guys, they can eat up a lot of space. If you're on a more restrictive map, it can be a little tricky to position your Daredevils how you want. So without further ado, let's get into what makes this team. So to go over the team very quickly, which will also be linked in the description, it is the Prime Kingpin at 55. We have Wonder Woman at 50. This is the death metal one who can bring people back to life. You probably see what we're going with this. And then... The next slot is where we have a few options. For right now, I have the Blackheart with Shot Gauntlets on it to mobilize our team. I also have a Scott Porter black shirt, Scott Porter white shirt with a Sinestro ring. And then we have three Daredevils at 20, one with the Muramasa, one with the Conchu, and one with Trick Arrow. Uh, to just kind of get into that, Muramasa feels like a must play to me because King or Kong, he doesn't like to die. This lets you cut through his defense and you can just get rid of him. Avatar of Khonshu is a fantastic 10 points. Stealth and Prob. Primarily Prob is just really nice. And then the last Daredevil has to be Trick Arrows. This is another equipment that I think if your team is not playing Trick Arrows in a competitive environment, I think you're just objectively wrong. The Trick Arrows are absurd. Uh, they're great for dealing with Kong. They're great for getting more damage off. Great for getting more attacks. It's, it's just crazy. So the primary goal of this team, if we look at this, We've got Daredevils who are 11 for 3. With Kingpin, we make them 12 for 4. With Scott, we make them 13 for 4. With different modifiers, you can bump those up even more. Cathan, 14 for 5. And once again, if you attack me, I go immune. I'm still going to hit you 14 for 5 next turn. I also have willpower rolls. I also have the Kingpin actions I can take to attack more. So if you're sitting across from this team, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, Kingpin has to die. And to do that... You're going to have to come across the board. You're going to have to hit me through my Daredevils. You're going to have to kind of ignore those things. If you do that, I might have opportunity to mastermind. If I don't, I have the opportunity to revive Kingpin with Wonder Woman. So you're going to have to invest a considerable amount of actions into hitting Kingpin. If you do that, my Daredevils are all here. If you don't, if you attack my Daredevils, guess what? My Daredevils are all here. You've fallen into my trap, if you will. (laughs) And then the purpose of Blackheart here, which is a substitute option, still playing around with this a bit. Obviously, Blackheart is to mobilize the Daredevils. It gets us full map reach with his ability to place a hindering terrain marker and then place two characters adjacent to him after he places into that hindering. So it gives our Daredevils, you can place out five. Daredevils can place two ahead of that. So seven squares with no modification. If you want to put Cathan on Blackheart, you could for an extra square of reach if that's ever prominent. And then the Daredevils can hypersonic do their thing. So I think the issue here And then we'll talk about the variations of the team and then we'll kind of be done. We'll gauge Calder's thoughts on this. Um, The issue with Kingpin that I think people are running into is that it's hard to get him in position to take his power action so that the Daredevils can attack again. I think the only way you're really doing that is in a defensive setup. And the reason being is that if you put Kingpin out there, he's going to die. If he's in your starting area, he's still probably going to die. So you have to play Kingpin in a method where he's not necessarily like with the team. 
I think you're playing him simply for the global effect of plus one attack, plus one damage, toughness. Is that worth 55 points? I am not entirely sure yet. Another cool thing about this team while I'm thinking about it, all the Daredevils get to copy Wonder Woman, so they're four through six senses, which rocks. But Kingpin, I think you have to kind of detach yourself from like maximizing his value. You have to look for it. When can I get this rather than how do I get this? Because if you're focusing too much on that, I think you're going to miss position. I think mm-hmm. you're going to end up losing it. You're going to put too much stock in your kingpin, and then he's just going to die. Whereas I think if you position more defensively, if you let yourself get less value and look for value later in the game with it, because your daredevils, once again, will stick around. If you get your opponent to move away from hitting kingpin or focusing on other things and getting in a position where maybe you can get that power action off based on what your opponent did, That's what you want to do rather than I'm coming to you looking to do this. So it's a matter of using Kingpin as more of a reactionary piece than a this is what I'm going to do every single time piece. And when you're not doing that, is the plus one attack and plus one damage and toughness worth it for your Daredevils? I'm not entirely sure. We have yet to see, other than George Masu, a fully dedicated Daredevil team. So this is one that I'm really interested to try. I think Wonder Woman is a great addition to this team to keep Kingpin alive. I think that makes the stock of hitting him a little bit lower because it's like, oh, he's just going to get revived. And that's going to be a pain in the butt. And if you use your Kong to quake and quake, Kingpin revives. Now you might only have single target attacks. So if I can mastermind something, Mm. I might be able to keep him alive. So the alternatives to Blackhearts with Gauntlets, let's say you want to take a more defensive approach. I think another option you can do is throw Soul Sword on Wonder Woman. So you get rid of Blackheart with Gauntlets, put the Soul Sword on Wonder Woman to keep her alive. You know, she has a stop click, so the Soul Sword allows her to heal up one, you know, keep her alive, essentially get a second stop click. You throw on Genesis with a Sword Bearer, who's going to benefit your Muramasa Daredevil. She's also just a good attacker. She's another leadership. She's a uh, carry. She's a fantastic piece. And then the Traffic Barrel on uh, the team. So if you wanted to just move your Daredevils up with Genesis, Traffic Barrel somebody, lock them down, shut down their improved movement... I don't think that's a bad idea. Even on the Blackheart team, if you took the gauntlets off and put the traffic barrel on, I think that's fine too. Another thing you could do is you could become the villain. I'm talking full two-phase. Take the Blackheart off. Take the gauntlets off. Throw Kong on. Play your own Kong. They come and Kong you, kill some things. All right, you have more pieces than me now. I'm going to Kong you right back. Also, you play Kong. You want to know who they're going to be more worried about than Kingpin Prime? Probably Kong. So could he be the bodyguard that Kingpin needs? That's the question mark. None of this is tested. Once again, this is untested. He invented and eventually Calder nested. <laughs> Can we get Calder to play Kong? I don't know. That's then, a really tough sell. The traffic barrel too. So the traffic barrel, this is a key that you have to talk about because this is something that comes on and off the build, I don't know, for literally months at this point. Traffic barrel to me is an offensive piece. It is not a defensive thing. It's a defensive thing if you're doing something differently. It can help you defensively, but I don't think that's what you look to do with it. Traffic Barrel Daredevil to me is I'm going to run across the map. I'm going to sit in front of you. If you hit me, I'm going to turn to Plasticity Poison, and you're going to have an awful time. You have no improved movement. You're locked down next to me who can't die, and I'm going to poison you. And then I'm going to hit you with whatever, whatever equipment I want on it. But that is pretty much like the entire thesis of it. The current one that I like the most, I think, the one I'm most interested to try is Blackheart. Because I think that's another piece that kind of pulls fire away from Kingpin, which ultimately, like, you want to keep him alive. But at the same time, if he dies, I think the team can still function. But Blackheart also enables the offense of the team. So it's between him. I mean, I think all three of these options are great. I can't land on anything. Really, it just needs to be tested. But that's not the name of the segment. (laughs) That's true. So, Calder, your thoughts. Would you play... A Daredevil team. If you're going to Nats Nats tomorrow or, or Wednesday, theoretically, <laughs> in theory, uh, in theory, hypothetical here. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about so, Daredevil? What's the pros? What's the cons? What are you worried about? Sure. So with this build, I so I played the Daredevil team of a different version of it a few months ago. On this one, I think we talked about a few things in team building a little while ago. So like things I like. I like Chainsaw Wonder Woman being on the build. Mm-hmm. Um, it was always such a bonus when Black Shirt could give Daredevil a Spider-Man team ability or something from an opposing character to copy. So him having 50-50 senses adds to his life just so much more. Oh, yeah. It makes him such a defensive beast mm-hmm. versus just being like, okay, normal senses. Now that it's a 
a 50 50 the biggest thing it does is it just gets someone to pause and go oh. it's a huge deterrent it's a massive deterrent mm-hmm. even though it's like even normal census will get people to do that but when it's a 50 50 it's really like gee so i want to am i going to chance this waste an attack on somebody yeah. yeah so i really like that I really like the idea of her keeping Kingpin alive in in a different way, right? Mm-hmm. So in like maybe the truest sense, she's not mastermind fodder. She's not whatever. It's straight up get out of jail free card. Here he is. He's back. Yeah. Uh, that's what she's known for. That's what she's kind of annoying. Uh, that's what. Oh, I, I you know, hate this piece. She- <laughs> I've never played this piece. I genuinely hate Death Metal Wonder Woman, <laughs> but she fits the bill. She does. She's also no. another leadership, which is never bad. Like that's another thing to highlight here: Kingpin leadership, Wonder yeah, Woman leadership, willpower, leadership, willpower, willpower. You have five chances to pull tokens yeah. with this team. There's a lot on there this. An, for the Daredevil team in general. There's an insane amount of like single D six rolls between the super senses, willpower, and then his uh, immune roll yeah, that he does when he dies. His stunting, his stunting, his stunt token roll. So <laughs> Blackheart's new though. Blackheart's mm-hmm. different. I'm iffy on Blackheart. I am too. I didn't. I've never utilized him all that much in 300 Modern. Um, he fits the theme, though. So in order he to keep dies. theme, he also just dies. Blackheart. So equipping Blackheart, I don't love. I understand why Shock mm-hmm. Gauntlets is there. It's you cool. You can give him the traffic barrel he's, instead. He's the, I think that's what I would lean toward personally. Mm-hmm. I think I'd rather give him the traffic barrel or have the traffic barrel on the team than give him Shock Gauntlets. Yeah. I get it. I get that he can place and then he can pulse wave knockback. Like, that's cool. That's a no. cool thing that he can do. I um, saw George doing it. I was like, man, that is really cool tech. It is, it is cool That's tech. potential damage because... I mean, the more I think about it, like, I think it's important on a small map. Like, to me, previously I was trying to build too defensively with Daredevil, and I don't think that's the correct way to go. Blackheart enables the alpha, and that's why I like it, because he okay. can get you across the board. Does he just die? Yes. Can he pull some heat from Kingpin? Potentially. Honestly, any of the options I listed, whether that be the Kong, the Genesis, or the Blackheart, will all do that, hopefully. Genesis, probably not. No one wants to attack Genesis. I don't want to attack Genesis. No. Everyone wants to attack Kingpin Prime. People are not stupid. Uh, and so mitigating that, giving them reasons to, you know, you can score this 50 points easier. I think there's a level of, like, mental game, mental hesitation that's created by Blackheart with that as well. Because it's like, oh, he's four clicks. Just get rid just of him. Just get rid of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just- and if you do that, I'm happy. Yeah. Because then you're coming to me. Yep. But if you're not coming to me and I have to come to you, Blackheart's going to allow me to do that. So yeah. you're probably never using your Wonder Woman revive on him. And yet the gauntlets I don't probably, know why you would. Yeah. yeah. The gauntlets say, yeah, you could totally swap for traffic barrel and that'd be fine. I think it would just depend on it's like how offensive do I want to play. And this is a team like once again, like the big reason why we're building this way is because so many people are like, oh, the game is over if I lose initiative. To me, Daredevil is a piece that says, is it? I think Daredevil. I don't is, think so. I think Daredevil's all about the clap back. In a lot of games that I played, where I just felt confident enough to move up in a semi-safe position, but I would just kind of admit to myself, they're going to hit me, and maybe a Daredevil will. I mean, they won't even die. That's the best part. Yeah. They'll go immune. <laughs> yeah. So that you have enough stock. It's like a uh, Smash Brothers, quite literally stock. So it's like, <laughs> okay, whatever. I fell off the stage once. I got eight more stock oh, in this team. It, crack it's, in the it's neck. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like okay. That's fine. I just have to lock in. My mm-hmm. opponent has more stock than me. So, to me, the, the fact that Daredevil just he doesn't die. So like that's the worst feeling in Hero Clicks. You get Alpha. Oh man, all my main attackers are just dead. Daredevil says, "Nope, I will always be around next turn," and it's so incredibly helpful. It's so strong. Yeah, there's that one that you yeah, can potentially one six, roll. But you have a black shirt, Scott, it's, to re-roll it if it's important. Which is yeah, which is a big thing. And I've I've done it a ton of times. I've played with Daredevils a lot, so. I think the amount of games that like people don't people don't like to admit this, but you can come back from games that you can think are like a losing build, and a, and a lot of 100%. people, especially the whole oh, if I go second, I just lose, which is kind of what this whole team is based to combat. And I think it does it super well because yeah. there's times where I've gone second, there's times where I've gone first, there's times where geez, I felt like I it was an uphill battle, and you can you're able mm-hmm. to come back from that through Daredevil through the fact that you just. What do they call it in chess? Uh, when you have pieces on the board, you have uh, ammo or what? They, there's some word they call it, but so you're like a numbers advantage. You never or... add numbers advantage. There, there's some term they use oh, where it's sure. like uh, something. You've like physical things, yeah. So it's like you know, in in the game of hero, who's in the game of chess, it's the exact same. The more pieces I have on the board to do things with, the better chance I have of coming yeah. back. I'll have better so, action economy. I'll, I'll be better able action to operate economy. More, yeah. You know, because versus it's like. I, I want to rely on my 
all my daredevils, right? So mm-hmm. when I lose my bishop, my whatever black heart, yeah. it doesn't matter as much because I still mm-hmm. have my daredevils, and by that point in the game, they should be forward enough. I don't need Blackheart anymore by the time he's dead. Exactly. So I like that a lot too. I think it's, you know, I think, well, I think every team is worth playing, at least trying out for the oh, most yeah. part. So I would, I would want to try this and see how much I actually like Blackheart just because mm-hmm. I, ironically, I haven't played him all that much, Blackheart. It's I really either. not been a piece that I've, I've built with or even like reached towards all that often. So I'd be curious to see it. The Kong substitution, the, I think, is really interesting. Because Kong is just, I mean, he's the best figure in the game right now. That one made my ears perk up a lot, honestly. Yeah. When you say, like, oh, just throw Kong on there. Because, yeah. Why you, not? You've completely shifted, number one, not easy to KO, no. not hard to take out at all. And now it's like the worry isn't even on Kingpin Prime anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like Kong is just such a beast. If you come himself. at me and you're hitting Kongs, or if you're hitting Kong, I can revive that with Wonder Woman. Oh, if you're hitting dang, Daredevils. So true. They're not going to die. Nope. You're hitting Kingpin Prime. I'm going to revive him, and now Kong is still alive. I really Kong might be the better option. I th- I think he kind of mm-hmm. is. He in is. a lot of what do we have? One, one, two. You could put three. Kong in front of your Kingpin too to block block line of fire. Maybe that is. You know, hey, yeah. we're live on the show. We're figuring this out as we go. Kong very well might be. I think for many teams, you can probably say putting Kong on it isn't a bad idea. Uh, it's just he's just that <laughs> good. Crazy he's that concept. relevant for just yeah. everything in the meta. So when you pair him with the likes of Death Metal Wonder Woman too, it's just like yeah, this guy's like a pseudo right away, stunter so himself. Insane. The Daredevil Mania. So yeah, I mean, at at this point, it's like your opponent just has really bad options. Standard character would be KO'd on Wonder Woman. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you can't revive Kong? She's standard, yeah. She says standard. I was like, you saying that? I'm like, oh, I got to double check. I thought that's why people played her so much, was because she could revive Kong. This is once we're getting for all friendly characters. Yeah, when a friendly standard character would be KO'd. Dang, I wonder if there are people out there cheating. <sighs> there might be. There might there, there Well, might hey, be. for all you cheaters out there. <laughs> oh, no. Well, once I'm kidding. Well, once again, you know... I I hate Death Metal Wonder Woman. <laughs> I hate no, this fair. piece. I do not want to play her. But I but like her on this build. But bill. I like her on this build so much. Her mm-hmm. not breaking theme. Her being another leadership. Because outside of Kingpin, this also really hurt. Because people would gun for Kingpin. He was your only leadership on that entire team. Ooh. Besides Death Metal Wonder Woman. Yeah. So it would always really hurt to lose him. Because not only now do you and not she have... She can just stay in the start. She doesn't have to do anything. That true. Very true as well, yeah. I like the... Now that we've talked about it a, more, a bit more, I really do like the idea of Kong being a body block for Kingpin. Yeah. Like sitting in front of him. And yeah, just being like, okay, deal with me. What are you going to do? A body block, but it's like, yeah, how do we get rid of the target that Kingpin has on him? Mm-hmm. Have a bigger target yeah. on the board. Yeah, <laughs> make a bigger target. Be, you know... <laughs> it kind of works. Target. Yeah, it'd be interesting. So yeah, that is uh, the first of many. Hopefully, I mean, I cook up a bunch of stupid teams. I have a peacemaker one too. That's I really like that team a no lot. No peace it's treaties. So fun. <laughs> that was made in response to uh, the ivy. quad poison ivy yeah. build when everyone said the sky was falling. Honestly, that that moment in time felt comparable to when the Secret Six first came out. Oh yeah, that was another Where era. people and thought honestly, automatically Matt's too. You just play Secret Six. Yeah, because yeah, it's like legitimately, it was the same discussion that we're hearing now with Nat. So to say that this has been echoed through eras is like, I mean, it's it's just been the conversation of HeroClix competitively for such a long time, and it's just it's proven to not be true over and over and over. Yet people still point at the sky and say, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. Like with Secret Six, it was legitimately like, "Well, if you play them." And you go first, then it's just like it's game over. So everyone's going to play Scarab. Everyone will play Sky Tyrant. And then almost nobody played Scarab for months and months and months. Yeah. And then he'd show up at major tournaments and people like, oh, yeah, that guy is, he's a something. (laughs) He's something. And Sky Tyrant obviously, you know, found his home in a lot of other places. So many. But it was never Secret Six. No, ironically. Very, very rarely. And then it would come out for Worlds. Like we, I believe we saw a couple Secret did, Six teams did, in Top yeah. 16 uh, two years ago. Or would be... Yeah, 2022. 2022, yeah. But it was never quite enough. And that team was quite literally on the basis of like, if I go first, I win. And the biggest drawback at the time was that team had zero access to barrier. So if you didn't go first, everyone's glass cannon squishy. Yep. Bang, they're done. So... I just the the main point of this, if you're gonna take away anything, if you're if you're interested in playing Legacy Daredevils, seriously shoot me a message. 
I've been making crackpot <laughs> theories about this guy for way too long. For months. For but so the long. The big takeaway, guys, is don't give up. <laughs> don't. And then another thing, too, is like when you're building teams, like talk it out. Test things if you want. I mean, we never go that far. <laughs> Kidding. But really, like, don't don't write off what you think like is a, a suboptimal idea because you might have something yeah. and you're just throwing it away. It's so easy to fall to prey to, oh, you know, just play the Blackheart Double Kong. But come on. Nobody That's wants no to fun. do that. Yeah. That's no fun. <laughs> I can understand if you're a person who does want to do that. There's no problem with that. But building against that, like, don't give up on it. Because yeah. if, if you find something where it's like, oh, man, but this will beat me or this will crush me, you're always going to have, like, every team has that. Yeah. Blackheart Double Kong with no Ghost Rider or anything. If he plays against a team of, like, I don't know, seven Captain Americas, horrible time. <laughs> he's, he's horrible cooked. time incoming. Yeah. <laughs> no defense powers anywhere. Uh. Like, there's an answer for everything. It might not be optimal to what else is out in the game. But the point is, guys, don't give up on your fun builds, on your fringe builds, because that's where the game at least for me, like lives and breathes. Yeah. You'd got to innovate. Uh, a person I think who's a great representation of that, Michael Nelson over at Kaiju Clicks. Hey, shout out. He's always cooking up some crazy stuff. And just listening to him talk about building, like it's inspiring really. Yeah. Cause it's like, I don't want to play this stuff. There's so much stuff that goes untested, unused. He played iron doom in Florida and did relatively well. That is so wild. Insane. That iron doom legacy. Yeah. Ugh. Everyone wrote that figure off as, I mean, to be quite honest, competitively trash. And this guy's out here saying, I no, I thought it was you know? stops carnage surfers. And that's yeah. what he did. He beat carnage surfers with yeah. that, which at the time was the big bad. No, if there's a piece you like, and it just seems maybe on the outside fringe, all it takes is one little weird effect, like mm-hmm. one little effect to be kind of relevant, even if it seems overcosted, even if it seems whatever, but if you're willing to put in the work, practice with that piece, use it a lot, I've done it before. Ian's done it before. If there's a piece you like, play it, give it a go, and you might do really well. You might win events with it. You might US agent. Yeah, man. Oh, the US agent team is so fun. In the era of Thanos. Oh, my gosh. Online tournaments, people are playing, oh, gosh, two by two Apox. When I beat Scarabs. Oh, Thanos. Oh. So gross. And then. Yeah, call the shows up. I show up and I beat like two Thanos teams on that yeah. online tournament. It rocks. And that was with another... US Agent. With US Agent just getting powers <laughs> left and right from constructs and sentinels dying. And it rocks. Dude, that that team was so much fun. Was so much fun. That was, I think, kind of what spawned this segment, honestly. Like because yeah. you were like, I want to play US Agent. I was like, all right, I'm gonna try and maximize it as much as I can. <sighs> But seriously, like, Gosh, the team just, oh and it was so funny reading the Facebook comments on that too, where it's like, "Well, this all seems normal. What the? <laughs> like, yeah. What's Calder doing? Yeah. So you can do it, guys. If you if you hone in your skill, if you practice something enough, if you commit to it, and don't fall to the mental fatigue of, oh, well, it just loses to. No, it doesn't. No, yeah. Hero Clicks is not that one dimensional. I know it's crazy. The game that has so many factors and so many things. It's not one dimensional. You can make the things you want to play work to a certain degree. There are some things where it's like, I'm sorry. Especially in the world of primes. And this will kind of be the last note we hit on for this segment. uh, To inspire you to be creative. With primes especially. I mean, how quickly did people pigeonhole uh, Prime Spider-Man? All of a sudden, like Mad Jim. Yeah. Nobody cares about Mad Jim anymore. Mad Jim is still amazing. Still, like still you could play such him. Still, insane utility piece that is so good. Prime Spider Man. I don't care about Hulk anymore. Prime Hulk just won an ROC event. Prime yeah. Hulk's insane. Everyone wrote him off. Oh, you know, you can just play Prime Spider Man. So it's so easy. Like that's just one line of thinking. Kong right now is that, but Kong's the real deal. Like he's just, he doesn't have any drawbacks. He really like, is the just that insane. Absurd. Yeah. But in the world of primes, especially, it's like if you think a prime is playable. Give it a try. They probably are. They pro- You can probably make them work. I mean, will they be as good as Spider-Man or Mad Jim? Eh, whatever. You could probably make it work, and you can probably hang with those figures. Maybe yeah. it's not on the same level, but don't let, like, let's go back to another point of this episode. Like, we have all this data on tournaments. It's small amounts of data. If you're basing all of your decisions on the small amount of tournament wins, small amount of tournament play you see... There's so much groupthink going on. There's so many people who are too lazy to build their own teams, so they just copy teams. And then that defines a meta, that defines the market for hero clicks. It's a very small sample size. To color outside the lines, guys, it might appear to be more difficult, but to go with what Calder said earlier, there's not as much competitive hero clicks played as you think there yeah. is. So to build outside of that and to compete against that, 
realistically, if you break it down, it's a handful of players. You can be a different player if you want to be. And maybe you don't want to be. Maybe you are just the Blackheart Double Con guy. Maybe you're just playing at home on the kitchen table. I mean, you're listening to Dial H. That's probably the reality. Probably a high chance, yeah. But anyway, going into Nats, we just had to pump you guys up. If you have that creative build and you're on the fence, bring it to Nationals. 100%. I want to see it. Let's see it. Let's talk to you. If you if you heard this episode and you're going to be at Nationals and you have a fun build, come talk with us. We'd be happy to. Honestly, this is this is why we play the game is building. I mean, what are you doing at work? You're building teams. Oh, some of my best times at work. Car building trip, teams. building teams. On the way to Nats, building teams. I mean, geez. In the hotel room the night before the tournament, rebuilding your team. Swapping, yeah. <laughs> swapping out. Honestly, yeah. Scratching off something on your HC unit's printout sheet that you want to change. The laminated printout sheet that you have with a Sharpie <laughs> mark. <laughs> Shout out, Tristan. Yeah. Uh, so I think that'll be the closing statement. Uh, in short, Legacy Daredevil is awesome. People are not playing him as much as they should. He's only really been seen as a support piece so far, but I'm telling you, he's got more mileage than that. He's got more stunting to do. Yep. Gen Con is only a few days away, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you're listening to this on your drive or plane ride down. If you are, hey, Ian and myself, we're going to see you there. And we yeah, can't we wait are. to see you. If you see us, we're pretty easy to spot. One mm-hmm. is a giant. One's wearing a cowboy hat. Uh, say hi. Walk up. Say hi. You know, if we get to cover you, maybe we'll interview you. We're going to do all sorts of fun stuff at Gen Con. Mm-hmm. We're excited. I'm excited to see the players there. You know, kind of just to echo the sentiments of this episode, I'm excited to see the creativity for Gen Con. I want to see what it's all about in team building. So, guys, oh, let me make one more point on that, too. You want to know what was a dead keyword and a figure that was never looked at and is now everywhere, even before Trick Arrows? Hawkeye Hawkeye. Yep. Detective builds. Yeah. Josafa played it. Hawkeye Hawkeye went from a $10 piece to a $50 piece overnight. Yep. Just like that. From one per one person doing well at one event did that. So to tell me that there's not undiscovered gems or reasons to not play outside of the meta, you are crazy. Shaggy, same deal. Price shot up. That's true. Yeah. The penguin super rare that he flexed onto his team using Misty Knight from A60 to give him detective <laughs> keyword. This was a ten dollar super rare. You can look at the eBay sales history. I saw him selling for thirty the other week. Mm. Is that what he's going to command on Facebook? I don't know. The point is, one player did that. One friggin' player. You could be that one player. So do not get discouraged. Bring what you think is cool. Play what you want to play. You could be the next Josafa. Who knows? What's the keyword? Is it uh, the quiet council? Is that going to be oh, meta? <laughs> no. Hey, I'm short on my uh, warrior theme yeah, team. Yeah, my uh, warrior team, baby. <laughs> see how it works. Oh, that's, that's the point. I'm sorry. I really want to drive that point home, guys. You don't you don't have to play with the ten or so other players who are commanding the meta. You can go against the grain, baby. You can do it. Hero clicks and may come should. in a box, but you can think outside of it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh man, that's good. Thank you. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks. For all your YouTube videos, podcasts, unboxing skits, and so much more. Make sure you dial H. Like always, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. You can go to shop.wizkids.com using code DIAL H10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order there, straight from the source. Get your WizKids Hero Clicks. Ooh, ah using code dial h10 it's a lot of fun ladies and gentlemen we'll see you at gen con and like always happy trails so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now i'm here to take back this vibe you may try but you know how we set things here instant deadpan human over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think i am funny i'm your captain that was just you in a costume you absolute fools send me to be on that that's cool because it's I'm gonna make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow.